Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. Hope everybody's doing good. I thought for some fun today, we would do a non-scientific controversial video about one of the biggest internet uh, gun hysteria myths, uh, especially on the gun forums and sometimes on YouTube, the so-called Glock bulge. And is the Glock bulge really something that we need to worry about or is it a big issue? Um, and perhaps maybe I'll admit, maybe it does exist, but is it something that's actually a problem for most people out there? And so um, for myself, I'll tell you straight up front, for the 10 years I've been reloading and reloading time and time again, all sorts of brass fired out of a Glock, hot loads, you know, weak loads, all sorts of stuff. Um, myself, personally, I've never encountered this as any sort of issue for me to worry about or be concerned about. Could it potentially happen to you? Sure, yeah, I won't uh, dispute that, that maybe somehow, some way, someone out there, whatever, um, they could potentially have an issue with it. But from what I've seen in practice, um, I don't believe it to be that big of a deal. And I believe what happens having been on gun forums now for many years is that people will hear about an issue, about something, whatever, and they will start regurgitating uh, this over and over. Even people who don't even own that particular firearm have never shot that particular firearm, or in the case of reloading, have even reloaded that cartridge ever in their life. They will regurgitate it as fact and it perpetuates itself. And you can go out there and do an internet search on the Glock bulge, and you will have you know a bazillion hits to all sorts of threads um, discussing it. So here's what we want to kind of look at is that even if this is an issue or uh, let's say like a problem or something that happens, maybe that's a better way to put it. Let's say it does happen. Is this something that's going to keep us from basically being able to reload our brass? And so we're going to do, like I said, a little non-scientific experiment. And the allegation with all this is um, hopefully it shows up well enough. I tried to get enough lighting in here so it works good, but the allegation is that right in here, um, maybe you can see it, but right in here, there's a little piece where it's unsupported by the chamber, okay? And so it goes is that, especially if you have a hot load, that the brass bulges in here and it makes it, in a lot of cases, uh, impossible to, to reload or you have to run it through a special die, or you have to run it through two dies, or whatever it might be, okay? So that is the allegation of the Glock bulge. So, um, like I said, for 10 years now, I've been shooting my own stuff. Never been that big a deal, but I thought, you know what? Let's have a bit of fun and have like a little test. Um, also, in case I didn't mention, I got the idea for this video from one of my uh, subscribers or watchers, uh, viewers, um, who uh, saw a video on the Lee app. And in a nutshell, they said, hey, I'm new to reloading. Um, I'm just about to start nine uh, millimeter. Uh, what do you do about the Glock bulge? And, um, you know, and all that. I'm thinking about getting this special die, so on and so forth. And I said, my experience, really, I've never encountered it to be a big problem, despite people saying, that it would be. Um, so thanks to the viewer for giving me the idea for this video. So I thought, hey, you know what we'll do is I'm going to dig into my stash. So I went ahead and threw together a bunch of uh, reloads of mine. Um, just basically a variety of different bullets, uh, bullet weights and all that. Um, I think these are Hornaday 115 grain full metal jackets. Um, and I think there's also some 115 grain um, HAP Hornadays in here as well. Uh, probably most of it loaded with uh, tight group. Kind of put these together. We can shoot some of these um, just kind of randomly. And then also the other thing is I dug into my stash too. And um, typically, you know, I shoot my own reloads for 9mm. But over the years, when you see, uh, you know, 9mm at a good price or whatever, you go ahead and you snatch it up because inevitably you lose brass and all that on the range. And so you kind of buy new factory ammo just to kind of keep, you know, new brass getting circulated into your system, basically. Um, 
So I dug in there and dug out a couple of different boxes. So we've got some 115 grain um, American Eagle. Um, you know, that brand's been around. It's a federal brand, been around for a while. Um, and then the other thing that we've got is uh, we have some herders. Um, so originally, I, th I think, or at least a number of years ago, um, herders was reloaded by S&B in the Czech Republic. And I think now, I think maybe Winchester does it. Uh, I'm not quite sure. Um, well, that, that might be s and I don't know. You know, this, this could date from years ago. But anyways, I think Winchester does their stuff now for Cabela's. But anyways, the Herders brand, obviously pretty common. Uh, if you go to Cabela's, typically this tends to be some of the more lower price stuff. Um, but, you know... Um, We'll, we'll try that. Um, and then the other thing too is we've got some Winchester 9mm 124 grain NATO. Now it's said with this that basically uh, this is loaded about 10% hotter than the usual 9mm target stuff out there. You know, I don't know if I've ever chronoed this stuff, but uh, like shooting things that I have, like for instance the Uzi and stuff, which likes hotter 9mm. Um, this tends to work a lot better than just standard, uh, you know, regular regular target plinking ammo. So let's shoot some of this. And then the other thing, which I don't have on me right now, um, I forgot to bring um, here, but uh, is 147 grain ammo. So I'll grab some of that out of my stash. So I think what we'll do is this, is we'll go out, uh, we'll pick a couple rounds um, out of each batch, basically. We'll shoot those rounds, uh, send them down range, shoot them, and then we'll have a visual inspection of the brass, okay? Then I think what we'll do is we will clean the brass and then we will resize it. And we'll put it in a case gauge and we'll see what we get. So, should be a lot of fun um, and, uh, you know, we'll have some fun with it and, um, you know, see, see how this all pans out. All right, folks, so here we are. I picked out a great day to do our Glock bulge non-scientific testing. And, uh, well, first thing I want to show you is just how nice the weather is today. Just have a look at this. Mid-February, 55 degrees. Absolutely no wind right now. Perfectly calm. A little bit of sun here. Now, when that sun starts to go down, I'll probably get start to get a little bit cold. But uh, yeah, I mean, can you beat this? You can't, uh, you know? Um, so, hey, um, late April, early May weather, uh, we'll take it. So let's talk about what we're gonna do here. Well, the plan of action is this. Out of my vast nine millimeter hoard of ammo, I went ahead and picked out a big variety of uh, um, ammo to shoot. And what we'll do is we're gonna shoot this ammo. We're gonna pick up the brass. We're going to deprime it. Then what we're going to do is we are going to go ahead and uh, go through the whole process of loading it. We're going to resize it. You know, we're just going to load it just like uh, we would any other brass. Then we're going to check it in the case gauge and see what fails. And then after that, we're going to bring it back and we're going to shoot it in the same Glock, in the same Glock barrel again. All right. And uh, we will see what the end result is, whether this Glock bulge is even a thing, or if it, e it, or if it is a thing, is it anything that uh, is gonna hinder us or potentially give us problems? So that's the idea behind the test. Let's look at what's involved. So we got a big variety of ammo. We have Herders, 115 grain. This is basically cellular and below. Um, back years ago, um, Herders used to get their ammo from them. As far as I know. Privy Partisan, 115 grain ammo. Then we have 147 grain uh, Federal, American Eagle. We have 124 grain Gecko, um, awesome ammo. This is now sold under the Norma brand, but it's basically the same ammo as far as I understand. Then we have 115 grain American Eagle. Uh, 147 grain uh, jacketed hollow points. Then we have random reloads that I put together for a USPSA match that I ended up not shooting. 
Um, so we've got all sorts of just random things that I picked out, various different loads of different powders, um, just stuff that I wanted to get uh, shot up and, uh, and all that. Um, and we've got like 115 grain hat bullets and all that. So just random, you know, um, basically manufacturers of the brass, all that sort of stuff. <clears throat> and it's been shot multiple times as well. So it has a bit of a history. We have our Glock barrel. So we'll be using our Glock barrel here. And then the other thing too uh, for magazines is originally I was just gonna run uh, 17 round mags, but I have these uh, Korean mags that I reviewed about two years ago. Um, they've just been collecting dust on the shelf. So let's go ahead and put them to work. Then also, I have a bit of blazer brass there as well. So good selection of ammo. We'll pick about 10 to 15 rounds of each out of here. Shoot it up and uh, then we'll go through the process like I mentioned before. And uh, we'll see what the results are. Okay, folks. So we have our Glock 17 right here with some uh, Talon grips on it with our factory Glock barrel. And we have some magazines. So let's go ahead and shoot some ammo up real quick. Get the party started. Not surprised the uh, the Korean mag uh, jammed up there. So, oh well. Um, we'll go ahead and keep on shooting. Okay, folks, so we went ahead and we finished up our testing here at the range in terms of running the ammo through. So here's all of our brass here in an Aquatana bottle. And so I'm sure there's a few pieces out there hidden somewhere I probably missed. That's typical. Usually it seems like in a box of 50, I probably missed at least one piece. Uh, the one issue we had was these um, uh, Korean uh, off-brand uh, Glock magazines that Classic Firearms sold. Um, I did, like I said, I did a review on them and um, haven't used them since. 
um, and kind of glad I brought them out today because guess what? They both jammed pretty much about halfway through the magazine. So basically what we're going to do with these is we're going to strip the magazines uh, apart, um, rip the uh, springs apart, and run them through the buzz saw and throw them in the trash. So I ain't got no time for that. I'll tell you that. So factory Glock magazines, that's the way to go. Never had one issue with them whatsoever. And so I'm sticking with that. Um, and I might, I actually bought a Magpul magazine for one project. We'll try that out and see if that's any good. So now on to depriming these pieces of brass here and uh, getting them clean and then getting them on the press. All right, folks, so here we are with our brass and we have our Frankfurt Arsenal deprimer. So a lot of times, um, you know, if, if I'm not doing stuff in the thousands and I just need to do some depriming, I use this tool. Um, overall, I've been pretty happy with it. I've deprimed thousands of pieces of brass works pretty good um, one thing I like to do with my brass is uh, instead of depriming on the press I actually uh, do it beforehand and then that way whenever I go to um, clean it I also um, get the primer pockets as well and I don't have to deal with uh, dirty primers um, on the press and, and that whole mess so it's something I kind of got in the habit of a number of years ago it works pretty well for me so what we're going to do here is we're going to get all these deprimed. Shouldn't take me too long. And then we'll go ahead and we will get it, get it into the um, Frankfurt Arsenal um, tumbler. We'll get it all washed. Now, just for you guys, uh, just to keep the test uh, somewhat uh, level, I guess you could say, uh, there's other 9mm brass that I need to be cleaned and stuff, but it's been fired in a bunch of different firearms. So I'm only going to wash this Glock brass so special trip just for y'all um, so that that way there's no you know everything has been fired in a Glock and there's no other farms involved or anything like that so that's the way we'll kind of roll with it this one's being a little bit testy uh, what's the deal with this one <clears throat> it's a Fiocchi brass I don't know why but uh, for whatever reason it maybe there's a piece of gravel stuck in there or something i'll deal with it later but anyway so we'll get this done we will get the brass washed and we will go ahead and move to the press and reload these pieces of brass all right folks so here we are at the press we are taking our brass that we fired in the glock 17 and uh, we have now we have deprimed it off the press and we also washed it so here's all of our brass right here um, got this uh, nice bowl from the Vermont Country Store actually. It works good for holding on my brass whenever I'm reloading. I didn't do my usual stainless steel pin thing with this. Um, just ran it in uh, a wet solution uh, to get the dirt off and that'll be fine for this project because we're going to take it out and shoot it again pretty much immediately. So everything's all nice and cleaned up. We're going to get all that loaded. Um, so the setup I'm using on the press is exactly the same for the 9mm project that is currently uh, ongoing on YouTube. Um, so you can check that out on my channel as well. The 124 grain spear uh, bullets with the powder, power pistol powder. Um, so that's what we got going down. So we're just going to use that load for this project. So we're going to get all this brass loaded up. Then what we're going to do is we're going to take it up to the range. We're gonna, well, actually, I'll tell you what, we will run it through the case gauge, check it out, make sure everything is all good, and uh, see what, what goes through or what fails. And then we will take it to the range, we will shoot it all up, and, uh, and we'll see if we have any issues. And then we'll have our final conclusions at the end. Okay, folks, so we're just doing a real uh, quick check of our work um, to make sure everything's good. We got our Lyman case gauge here just to check everything over. So if there are any uh, issues at all with any sort of bulging or any production errors from loading it on the press, uh, that should rear head. Or if there's any uh, issues with the brass, um, you know, pretty much this process here um, should identify any problems before we actually go to shoot. And by doing this over, over the years, I have saved myself a tremendous amount of trouble. I actually just put out a video on this 
uh, why 380 sucks and why you should uh, always use a case gauge if possible or at least check your work um, and by doing so um, it's always saved me a tremendous amount of trouble so everything's looking good here everything is uh, whoops everything is fitting that case gauge good everything's looking good and so um, uh, I'll let you all know if there's any rounds that pop up that uh, don't fit or have any problems okay folks so we went ahead and ran everything through the case gauge not one problem at all if for some reason there would have been an issue where this brass was bulged and the resizing die was una unable to take care of it we would definitely run into an issue where this would not end up fitting and we'd end up getting kind of jammed up there um, and uh, we'd have an obvious problem but so far um, what can I say uh, everything looks like um it's it's just fine now what we'll have to see is we'll go out tomorrow to the range we'll reshoot all of this in the glock again and uh see what we get see what results we get okay folks so here we are on a very breezy afternoon with the sun starting to set and we're going to go ahead and get our glock bulge testing done we have our factory glock magazines we're here at the range we have our glock with our factory Glock barrel. We have our rounds that we have previously fired in a Glock and we have now reloaded. So it's time to test for that Glock bulge and see if it's going to be a hindrance for us. Also too, I was gonna do some GoPro footage today, but as anyone who has a GoPro knows, uh, the batteries are dead, which is typical. Oh well, so we'll just have to shoot with this, the, uh, the iPhone and uh, that'll, that'll have to do. All right, folks, so here we go. We'll try this camera view, see if it works out okay. All right, folks, so we're down to our last couple um, bit of rounds. So in this magazine here, we only got three, and then the other two magazines are all full. So we'll go ahead and shoot that one with three first. Get that out of the way. Okay, last magazine. Okay, folks, so let's start to wrap this up with our findings in terms of the data that we got out of this, and then we will talk about our conclusions. 
So, um, first off, uh, the first thing was with the assorted basket of ammo that I put together of reloads that I had done previously from a variety of brass manufacturers, you know, I mean, just everything was in there. Uh, and then also we had a wide assortment of factory ammo uh, to test out as well. Um, so we put all that in there, zero failures. Uh, we did have the two issues with the magazine um, but that had nothing to do at all with the ammo. The ammo was just fine. Um, so everything shot just fine, no problem. We then went ahead and we cleaned our cases and we resized them as normal with a Redding 9mm die. Then we also, I didn't put that in here, but we also ran them through a case gauge. Um, every single piece of that ammo uh, cleared the case gauge with zero issues whatsoever. Um, we then went out to the range. We shot all of that ammo up. Uh, all, the re all the reloaded ammo was shot in the same gun with a factory barrel. And we had zero issues at all. There were no jams, nothing. Everything shot great, no problems at all. So let's talk about our conclusions. Okay, folks, so let's wrap up this fun little project that we did with our Glock Bulge testing and see what conclusions that we got gathered out of this and uh, fun little project non-scientific anecdotal just having a bit of fun and here's the first thing number one in terms of what we actually know um, if it ever was a problem at all um, the best I could ever find out with all the extensive research I've done over the years on this and paying attention to all the gun forums and all that stuff, if it ever was a problem, it appears to be isolated to early generation 40 cal Glocks, okay? And even there, I would say the so-called evidence is kind of somewhat dubious or it's just, you know, um, I'm, I'm not seeing a lot of hard, hard evidence on it. But if it ever was, that appears to be where the, the issue kind of came out of. Um, in terms of other clocks, I cannot find any real solid proof that it's a real actual issue for any other cartridge or older gener or newer generation of clocks at all. Um, can't find anything on that really of significance. Um, and here's the problem is that you know, someone comes up with kind of a story out there about they ran into this issue or that issue. Then people start to spread myth as fact on the internet and then it blows up into this whole thing. And I have seen it numerous times on internet, internet gun forums. I have seen it on my own YouTube channel uh, where people, people speak this as fact that whatever Glock that you buy or whatever cartridge that you're using, if you shoot ammo through it and then you try to reload it, this bulged case is going to keep you from doing that and it's going to be a big problem. And I've even seen on internet forums and stuff where someone says, hey, I'm going to go out, I'm going to get a Glock 17, uh, I'm going to, you know, reload for it, all this stuff. And sure enough, there will be all these people piping up. Well, don't you know, if you get a Glock, there's going to be this bulge thing that's going to happen and your brass is going to bulge and you ain't going to be able to reload it and all that, you know, and, and you find out from a lot of these folks that, uh, they've never even owned a Glock before. They're just repeating all this stuff that they heard and just chiming in online and they, they don't have, they don't even know what to talk about. Um, they don't have any personal experience with it. So I think if you have some personal experience with it, then, Hey, cool. But, uh, you know, in a lot of cases, it's just stuff, you know, people regurgitating these little soundbite things and, you know, what's, what's the facts? <laughs> um, the reality, okay? Here's the thing to remember is that sometimes out in the world, there may be things that actually exist, okay? But are they actually a problem, okay? And I see this a lot of times uh, where people can go down these rabbit holes of some sort of issue or something like that. And it may be an actual little problem or a little issue or something, but does it actually affect the results at the end of the day? 
And I would say here, the reality is, is that if it does exist, it doesn't stop the ammo and the brass, you know, basically from being resized back to correct dimensions. Um, I mostly use Lee and Redding dies. Uh, so, you know, like today, we, uh, with this whole project, we used a Redding 9mm die. As long as your die is set up properly, it should be able to whatever, you know, whenever that case is fired, the brass case expands, and then um, as the pressures drop, it contracts, but it doesn't contract all the way back to the original size. So whatever expansion and contraction that goes on there, that's what your resizing die is for, and it should, if it's working properly and you have it set up properly, it should have no problem resizing it back to correct dimensions. Now, here's the thing. Uh, brass wears out over time. Um, it gets fired a bunch of times, whatever. Sometimes you have different levels of quality um, between manufacturers, or it might start to age, or whatever. There's all si sorts of factors that can go on there. Um, things just kind of wear out over time. So, you know, like I do, whenever I reload 9mm, I would say usually, you know, not always, usually between one out of every 150 to 250 rounds, uh, I will have one round fail the case gauge. And maybe it's because the brass is getting old, um, where, you know, it's just kind of wearing out, um, or there's an issue where I didn't seat the bullet properly, or something like that. And it's a thing where I just need to pull the bullet and chuck the brass. I don't have this uh, hang, you know, a lot of folks get hung up over brass. And to me, it's something which lasts for a period of time. And then it, you know, it has its service life, so to speak. And then when it's done, it can go on to its new life being uh, recycled into whatever, okay? And into the recycling bucket it goes. But from what we saw, um, that ammo that we shot in that Glock and resized and reloaded as normal, uh, we had no issues whatsoever in our testing. Testing showed no issues at all. Everything fired just fine, no problems. I didn't do anything special. I just resized it in that Redding die. Um, you know, before we went to the range, as we saw in the video, uh, we checked everything out with the case gauge. Everything fit the case gauge fine. No problems whatsoever. And when we shot it, no problems. I mean, what can you say? No problems. <laughs> so here's the thing at the end of the day, I learned this in 2020, is that um, any time that we ha um, come up with um, non-scientific assumptions or anecdotal experiences or whatever, and maybe we look at uh, just a little bit of data, whatever it might be, we have something called settled science. So. At the end of the day, our conclusion is that this is settled science, that it's a myth, it's a non-existent problem, it doesn't exist at all, and with settled science, there's no further debate required. It is what it is, and you know, we come up with whatever we come up with, and there we go. So, that concludes the video. Thanks for tuning in, y'all. Um, we have a ton of videos coming up soon. I'm working on all sorts of projects. I've been putting a lot of work into the channel to kind of amp it up. And also too, I like to do a lot of variety of stuff. I'm not gonna do the same stuff all the time. So expect a lot of variety on the channel. Tons of videos I'm working on. So stay tuned, you never know what you're gonna see on here. And we'll see you all next time.